Let the church say amen to the house of the Lord, ministry and outreach. This is your Sunday morning announcement for our pastor, Timothy Flemish Jr., currently located at 301 West Park Place Drive, Lancaster, Texas, 75134. Let's continue to pray for those on our prayer list. Emma Wade, Tyronda McGee, the Houston family, Virginia Henderson, Brother Lonnie Hogg, Larry Brown, Ann Washington, Sheila Lemon, Sheila Alexander, Ramona and Joe Nickelberry, George Hillary, Richard Benjamin, and Will and Lucy Payton for the loss of their loved one. Let us continue to pray for one another. Remember our fast days is every Wednesday. Amen. Prayer service is Wednesday from 1230 until 1 p.m. You can join us via Zoom, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, and 18. Rejoice every more. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God and, of God. and Christ Jesus concerning you. Yes. Amen. Bible study Wednesday night from 7 to 8 via Zoom. Our very own pastor expounding family every Wednesday on the word of God. If you have a desire to know more of the Word of God, come join us on Wednesday night. You will be blessed. John 8, 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This Sunday, again, this Sunday, our First Lady will be speaking. We will welcome everyone that come out, and we'll welcome everyone that came out today. So this crowd here, we want to expect y'all to see y'all next Sunday. It's a continue. We appreciate everyone that is helping to support the ministry by giving up your tithes and offerings. If you're not attending service at the sanctuary and would like, again, would like to help support the ministry, please tell your offering to 214-991-9994. Again, get your paper and pen out. Write this number down. 214 214- 991-9994. May God continue to bless you in your prayers and thank you for your support. This has been your Sunday morning announcement. Govern yourself accordingly. Amen. 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 You may be wondering why I have my shades on, and I guess I wanted to clarify that first because I had eye surgery, cataract surgery removed, and it's kind of like a glare, sometimes a, uh, a glare. So I may be able to pull them off and read with them, but I want to just uh, stay on point so I ain't trying to be um, fashion or nothing. I just, I'm just trying to see, hey, amen, this morning. Amen. 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 I go, I go December 1st to get the other eye. So I'm, I'm seeing out of one eye. One good eye, one other eye. Hey, amen. But we're going to see and we're going to try to bring you the word of God according to the way God gave it to me. Hey, amen. And I before I get started, let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, and our Son, Jesus' name. God, as we come before you today, God, we give you all glory. We give you all honor. We give you all praises, God. We just thank you for being the God that you are in our life on today. And God, as we enter to your presence on today, God, we just ask that you just bless us all one by one, name by name, in the name of Jesus. Let your presence be felt among each and every one here today, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And God, we know we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praises, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we just pray that the word will go into the hearts of everybody on today, God. And it will be a blessing to everyone that under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name. And God, I just thank you for using me on today to be a vessel. I thank you, God, because I humble myself as a vessel before you, God. Hallelujah. As humble as I know how. God, I just pray that you just be with me. You speak through me, God, today in the name of Jesus. You have your way, God. Not my way, but your way on today, God. And all glory and honor and praises go to you. And we just may ever say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I will be coming out for the reading of the word. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. 
in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I am just bubbling over. So, y'all, if I get excited up here, it's because God is in control. Amen. Amen. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The key word today is restore. Amen. He restores my soul. Amen. Amen. Have your soul ever been restored by the Lord? Amen. He restores my soul. Amen. Hallelujah. My message on today will be restore me, O oh Lord. Restore me, O oh Lord. A lot of us in here today, we need to be restored by the Lord again. Amen. We need to let the Lord restore us again. Amen. Amen. The key word in restore, he restores my soul. Restores me to make complete, to fix, to mend, to repair, and to turn around and give back. Restoration brings healing. So God is going to restore us and he's gonna, it's restoration time. Amen. It's going to bring about healing. It's going to bring about repairing. It's going to bring about returning to a previous state of being. So whatever was going on in your life, God can fix it. He can make it complete. He can mend it. And he can turn it around for it. Amen. Reminds us that whether it is life or death, yeah. in times of plenty or time of war, yeah. God is worthy of our trust. Amen. We can relax and not even worry about it because God provides and he cares for us. Amen. 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 How many of us know that God can fix anything? Enjoy. Uh -huh. It's a fact 
that God gave, Jesus gave sight to the blind. Now Jesus restored, we're going to talk a little bit about how Jesus restored while he was on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. God, Jesus did so, so many miraculous miracles, restoring the sight to the blind and healing the deaf and uh, 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 raising the dead and giving sight to blind motivators. He said, motivators, <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> He raised, he raised Lazarus from the dead, and surely he can wipe the tears from my eyes. Amen. Amen. Even the lady that had the issue of blood for 12 long years, you know, God restored her. So that's what we're talking about, restoration time, restoring, bringing it back, making it complete, making it whole. God can mend. God can fix it. God can do it all. Amen. Sometimes the struggle of life can suck the joy right out, out of our lives. It can be one struggle after another. We can easily become trapped under the weight of despair. Now, a lot of times when we're going through our trials and our tribulations, sometimes it seems like you can't get ahead mm -hmm. because every time you make two steps, it seems like you have to go back two steps. You know, mm -hmm. you know it just seems like the struggle keeps coming and coming and coming. It seems like there's no end to the struggle. But I'm here to tell you that God can restore. Whatever's been broken, whatever's been torn down, and trouble. He is the rock of ages. He's the I am and the Omega. He's the I am and the Omega. You can have that confidence in knowing that he will never leave you nor forsake you. God, listen to this now. God is with us. He's under us. He is beside us. He is before us. He's ahead of us. Amen. So which means he is all around us. Amen. And we shall not want for anything. Amen. 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 In Zechariah chapter 10, verse 6, I will restore them of my compassion. I have seen the way. I will heal them. I will guide them and restore them. God's ultimate plan for us is that we live forever in his kingdom. When we give our lives to God, we're giving him permission to do his will in our lives. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord, Amen. but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. God is going to give you strength. He's going to restore you. He's going to give you the strength you need to go through what you're going through. And in the midst of all of that, he's going to come back and restore it. He's going to fix it. He's going to make it complete and make it whole. Amen. We shall mount on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. We must ask in faith. Believe that he is able. And taste and see that the goodness of God. Amen. I can tell you all day long how good God is. But until you actually taste it for yourself. shared it before, and but we've got a lot of new people here today. Some may not have, have, have heard of it, have heard me speak on it. But I went, my testimony, how God restored me back some years ago when, when, I, when I got saved. I, uh, we, we lived in the project. Mm -hmm. We came out of the project. God put us in a nice home in Pleasant Grove. That's before it got the way it is now. It was really nice and it was only like um, it was only like two um, black people on the street. It was really, really nice area at that time, way back in the early uh, late 70s. Uh, God blessed us with a nice home and uh, and you can tell so much that uh, some of the white people put KKK on our, on our, in our sidewalk so they didn't, they didn't like the idea that we had moved into the community. Yeah. But, you know, I just thank God because during the process of that, God had blessed us over bountifully. We had, we, we had plenty. We didn't have to want for anything. God had supplied our needs and my husband was working and we had, we had plenty of income coming in. Then, after a period of time, it seemed like the bottom fell out. 
Mm. You know, my husband started doing drugs. Jesus. You know, and before that ended up, uh, we began to separate. Mm -hmm. And so things just began to fall down. Things wasn't looking as good as they were at the beginning when we had everything that we thought we needed in life. You know, God was supplying that. And he's still yet supplying. But during that course of my life, it was like we we started, things started falling, unraveling. Yeah. My husband got on drugs, and then we ended up separating, and then we ended up going through a divorce, and then I ended up we ended up losing our home, um, and then we ended up I ended up losing my job because I couldn't provide for my three children at that time because I needed an income. I lost my job. It was just one thing after another story. That's a struggle of life sometimes that you go through. Amen. And how God can be with you even in the midst of your trials and in the midst of your struggles, whatever you're going through. Amen. And I could see ourselves. We were, we were having a hard time. I lost my job and, and couldn't make ends meet. It seemed like every place I'd go, and I had experience because God had blessed me with a good job. And he even gave me the job when I didn't have a degree. And people that had this position needed a degree, but he gave it to me without the degree. So I know God is when, when my season was coming, it was time that season was my season for me to go through at that time. And I couldn't find a job and I was looking everywhere. So I had to start working two jobs, trying to make ends meet. And I remember how even one my son was even trying to go to work and try to help us provide it. I went and when I had to go pick him up sometime in the evening I would feel so sorry because he was working at this warehouse. Yeah. And we've always been able to provide for my family and, and, and then to see him out there at a young age have to help out. You know what I'm saying? So he would be sweating. He was he was coming out there work from that warehouse and he had been sweating so hard he was just <laughs> ran wet with sweat. You know, but I just thank God because he was willing right. to help out. Right. You know what I'm saying? God, he was Life. And you know, I, 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 I just thank God because even after that, I lost my son. Amen. And that was one of the most devastating things that you can ever encounter in your life. That is pain, 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 no come of pain. Amen. God was with us during that period of time. So I lost my job, I lost my husband, we lost our house, and then I lost my son on top of that. Then on top of that, I got sick. Amen. So it was just one thing after another. But you know, through all of the things that I went through, God came back and he restored me. You know, I didn't give up on God. I didn't give up on God. All the things that we went through, I didn't give up on God. God came back and restored me. Not only that, he blessed me with another job. You know, when we went through all of that, he blessed me with another job. He blessed me with another home. Not only one, he gave me two. You know, not only that, he blessed me with children. I got daughters and sons everywhere. You know, God is an awesome God. You know, he will restore back that you lost. Amen. He will give it back to you. If you just hang in there and trust him, you know. So that's what I did. I hung in there. I didn't let go. I didn't let go. I held on to God even through the difficult, the difficulty times in my life, when I thought I probably could have uh, uh, gave up, because even during the time that I lost my son, I told God I didn't want to live anymore. I just wanted to die. I just couldn't take this no more. It was just too much for me. But you know, God saw my pain, you know, and he just took me through it, amen, and he brought me out, and I can stand with the victory today. He will make you whole. He will give you the joy in the midst of your trial. He will give you the peace in the midst of your trial. So nothing's too hard for God. So if you put your trust and your confidence in God, God will restore everything that yeah. the devil tried to take from you. <laughs> we have choices. We can complain and remain in the same awful condition, or we can let go and let God restore. Let go let go. The law sometimes can be inedible. And sometimes the uncertainty to recover can be painful. Now sometimes when you're going through all of this here, it's not comfortable. It doesn't feel good at all. But God has a plan for restoration for your life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. All right. All right. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord. The plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. 
I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel with you and my eyes is upon you. How many need, how many of us know that God is watching? Amen. God sees everything and God knows it so. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I can think about Naaman. He had leprosy. We're talking about uh, a restoration restored. God can restore you from anything and everything. Amen. And I'm going to give a brief synopsis on Naaman because the story is so long that I don't have time to just go through the whole story. But Naaman uh, reminds us that God's way is not always our way. Well, and we're still talking about restoring. The Bible says that Naaman was a commander of the army for the king of Aram. Uh -huh. And he could have come to him, you know, but he did and he sent his prophet out there. So uh, Elijah's servant shows up at the door with instructions for Naaman to be healed. This made Naaman outrageous. Naaman almost rejected the opportunity of being healed because he was angry at what Elijah had done and he didn't show up to greet him. Now, Naaman was a big shot, like I say, and he wanted the prophet to run out and greet him because of who he was. Amen. Elijah told him to go wash in the Jordan. This is the instruction that he gave him. Go wash in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored to you, and you will be clean. Mm -hmm. Naaman started contemplating in his mind. Now, he's saying, now, after all that I am and who I am, he think that I'm fit to go to the Jordan River and that dirty water and dip seven times? What does he think about? Do he know who I am? You know. And a lot of times today, people has got so much prestige, they've got so much position and power that they think that God owes them something. Hey, Amen. You know, instead of following the instruction and the commandments that God has set forth for him. He's going to talk about, uh-uh, that ain't for me to do. That's for somebody else. Now, all those other rivers I passed by, then you're going to send me down here and want me to, to dip in this dirty water. Yeah. He said, uh-uh. But then one of his servants started talking to him, you know, giving his mind and telling him. And he was saying that, don't you know, don't you, he was telling him, he said, don't you realize that the Sea of Galilee and his mouth is nearly 1,300 feet below sea level. So to go down to Jordan means that you have to go down, down, down. How many of us know that sometimes God gives us at our lowest? Amen. He takes us down, down, down before he brings us up, up, up. And so we ourselves have to become meek and humble before God. So Naaman was thinking within himself, why me? You know, why I got to go through this? Why I got to go dip in this water? Have you ever asked yourself the question, Lord, why me? You know. Naaman said that we have rivers better than Jordan. Naaman didn't realize that the power was not in the water, but it was manifested by being obedient to what God had said. Amen. Naaman, he continued to doubt God. And when he entered into the Jordan River, God said seven times. Naaman finally humbled himself. He started dipping. But when he started dipping and he saw the water, he thought that when he, he thought he could shortchange God, you know, I thought I could probably dip one time, two times, it's gonna be all right. But God said seven times, yeah, Amen. So we have to be we have to be obedient to God in His fullness. Whatever God says in the fullness, that's what we have to be obedient to obey. So he went down seven times, and his skin his skin was restored, and it became like the skin of a small boy. We must humble ourselves in the same way and be obedient to whatever God has to say. God wants us to go the extra distance. We must believe that God's way is better than any other way. Amen. And he can do anything and he can accomplish his purpose in our life. In 1 Peter 5 and 6 it says, Humble yourself before the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Sometimes we have to taste pain before we can experience joy. And when we really get desperate, when we really get desperate and get serious, we will go whatever length necessary to receive our restoration yes. from God. Amen. 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 My conclusion. How many of us have ever experienced being locked out? Mm -hmm. Maybe you've been locked out of your car or your residence. 
It's an unpleasant feeling. Think about it. Now, God woke me up and he gave me this. God is saying that a lot of us have locked him out of our lives. He's standing on the outside, looking in. We locked him out when we stopped seeking his face. We no longer have that communion with him. We don't fast and we don't pray. We'll go about doing our things in our way and we leave God out of our plans and our life. He is on the outside knocking, trying to get in, talking about restoration. Lord, restore me. We are trusting in our powers instead of the powers of God, instead of desiring to be rescued by God. You may have drifted away. Jesus can pick up the pieces and he can bring you out. He has the key. He gave it in. He has the key to whatever door or situation you need open. We must humble ourselves and submit to the wise plan of God. Now God just woke me up and I just went to write. Just went to write. And he was just saying, I've got the key to whatever door. Y'all blocked him out of your life. Y'all got him on the outside. He's knocking on your heart's door trying to get in. He said, whatever situation you're going through, whatever problem you're encountering right now, just know I got the key. I can't knock that door for you if you only let me. Amen. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in with him and stop the hearing and leave with me. Some of us are walking in darkness. And the power of God has gone out of our lives. Mm -hmm. And unless we let God restore the light, we cannot be effective to God. Jesus. He can bring you out of darkness mm -hmm. into the marvelous light. Yeah. I am the light of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I am the light of the world. Yeah. He gave me this too. He said over 2,000 years ago, uh -huh. Christ bared the cross for your sins and for mine. He carried it all the way to Calvary for you and for me. He said, why are you still carrying it? Hallelujah. Why do you still have it? What are you going to do with it? Hallelujah. Give it to God. Give it to God. Give it to God. Christ has already paid for it. Amen. On the cross. He wants to know why you still trying to hold on to it. Give it back to the devil. Amen. Take what's yours. Lord, restore me. Restore me, Lord. Lord, restore me. Hallelujah. Refuse to let him make you unhappy. Refuse to let him make you sad. Refuse to be disappointed. Refuse to be sick. Refuse to be in pain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Refuse to be lonely. Yeah. Refuse to be defeated. Mm -hmm. Refuse to feel hopeless. Hallelujah. Yeah. Refuse to be confused and lost. Hallelujah. Yeah. He can replace the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Yeah. Give it all to Jesus. Yeah. He will restore you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Restoration is here. pertaining to life. He is the maker and creator of all things. And all we have to do is just ask. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Let's cry to God. God restore me. Amen. Restoration. God restore me. Restore my relationship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Restore my faith. Restore my hope. Restore my trust in you. Hallelujah. Break down the barriers that have separated me from having a relationship with you. It's time to let go and let God restore all. Hallelujah. 
track. Yeah. We've gotten off track with God. Amen. God wants to bring us back to Him. Yeah. Amen. And everything else in your life will fall in place. He will fix it. He will fix every situation. Every problem. Yes, he will. Everything that you're going through. Yes, get anything that you may encounter. Yes, all of the unhappiness, all of the loneliness, yes, all of the pain, yes, all of the sadness. You don't have to deal with that. Yes, you let God restore you yes, back. Hallelujah yes, to him. God is a restored God. Hallelujah. Yes, and, he yes, he and he wants his people to turn back to yes, him. Yes, Amen. He wants us to make us complete. He wants to make us whole. Amen. He wants us to be restored. He wants us to have the peace, the joy, and the happiness. Amen. Why don't you let God restore you on today? Amen. 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 God bless you. Things of the world and the cares of life suck out all the joy. Yeah. You know, everything that God's yeah. trying to restore to you, you're letting uh -huh. the devil take it away from you. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Take back what the devil told you. You can take it back. You can take it back. You can have it. God's got it. Amen. He wants you to have it. Amen. So we just want y'all to know that God loves you. Amen. Amen. It's a song that um, was in my heart. Uh, I wish I could sing. <laughs> but God didn't give that to me yet. Maybe one day he will. Amen. I believe. Just believe. But I think it's by Paul Morgan. Uh, yes, Yes, believe. Yes, believe. Yes, believe. Yes, believe. Yes, believe. 
abuse, molestation. Hey. 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 Hey.